Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to try to make a quick video on how to change a mesh or a model from this mesh filter through script. A viewer wanted to know this, so I'm going to do that real quick. So let's just get started. This scene right here, I did get it from the asset store. I'll put a link down below. And as you can see, it's pretty much this asset pack right here. It's the origami animals pack and it is free. So I will leave a link down below. It has just 12 animals and the scene that you are seeing right here, this green scene. So let me just start with this, this tutorial. So all you really have to do is for simplicity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a game object and this game object is going to be called mesh changer. And then I'm going to add a component. It's going to be a script called change mesh and I'm just going to add that script and I'm going to open it up if it allows me in Visual Studios if it got it so here's the the script change mesh I'm just going to delete all this because I'm not going to really need it but you don't have to delete it if you don't need to don't delete it and then I'm just going to add a serialized field and I like to serialize field pretty much everything unless I'm going to use it in a different class so since I'm not going to use this script or this variable in a different script this script is just going to be used here and nowhere else so i'm going to make this private and not public and so i can see it in the inspector i'm going to serialize field i'm going to put the serialized field attribute and then i'm going to put private mesh filter and this is going to be the mesh or the model you want to change and then this one over here, we're going to do a serialized field, private. This is going to be a mesh. So that would be the model, the actual model. So model you want to use. And then you guys can name this anything you want. I'm just making it real long so it's clear to you guys what it is. And there's really no confusion, especially when I'm writing the script. So for this, I'm going to check for a key input. So I'm going to put if input dot get key down so if i push the key down and the key code will be space so if you go back you can see all pretty much the whole keyboard right here so i'm just gonna put space and then i'm gonna put mesh filter model you want to change dot mesh equals model uh, you want to use and then if let's say you wanted to use a button instead of your keyboard all you would have to do is make a public void and then we'll just say change mesh with button and then all you got to do is copy this line of code right in here that's all you would have to do and then if we go back to unity we're gonna see we got these two fields so it says model you want to change so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna change this middle one which would be the crane I'm going to lock the inspector just in case it wants to change on me and I'm going to put the crane right in here. So now to make this more easier, I'm going to go to this crane right here and I'm going to click mesh and it's going to show me where the meshes are. So I'm going to go back to mesh changer, lock it again and let, let me show you if I drag this one in. If I drag this one in, it don't allow me to drag it in the mesh, but it does allow me to drag it in the mesh filter. That's because these are mesh filters. So make sure you get the right one. This one right here would be the mesh, but this is the same one. It's the crane. So I'm going to use the dog and now I'm going to change this crane into the dog when I either push space or I click on this change mesh. So I'm going to click on this change or actually I'm going to click on the space and as you can see, it changes into the dog. Now for the button to work, all you would have to do is add this button. I added a button real quick. All you do, right click, UI, you know, button, either one. And then in the button, what you would have to do is you would have to go all the way down here to the on click event, drag in this uh, game object because it has this script on it. Since it has this script, we're going to drag it on there and we're going to go to change mesh and change mesh with button. So right here, change mesh. That's the name of the script and change mesh with button. That's this right here. So we're going to go back and now it should work when we click the button as well. So as you can see, when you click the button, it changes as well. Now you could always extend this, make this, you know, different, change this how you want. You know, you could turn this into an array real quick. You could add a private int and then put current model. And then you would have to add these parentheses right here and add current model. So this is an array. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned arrays before. An array is just like a list of objects. 
So we're going to have an, a list of uh, game objects or a list of meshes. So we're just going to have a bunch of meshes stored into this variable. And then what we're going to do is when we push space or the button, it's going to show the first mesh because current model, this would be equal to zero at first. When it goes down here, it's going to increase it by one. So as soon as this block of code is done, the current model will equal one. So next time I push space, this won't be zero no more. It would actually be one and then so on. So it would go to two. Next time I push space, it would go to three and so forth. And then just so this does not break, what you would want to do is you would want to add an if statement saying if current model is greater than or equal to model you want to use dot length. So if, if it's greater than or equal to the length, the list, what we're going to do is we're going to equal the current model. We're going to put it back to zero so it could start from the beginning all over again. And we're going to do the same for the, the same for the button just so it works with the button as well. So now once this compiles, we'll go back to this mesh changer and we're going to see it a little different because now we have an array instead of just a normal variable. So as you can see, it has this list. Now this list, if you guys don't know, you could add it right here as much as you want. You could also type in the number or you could do what I'm going to do right here is lock the inspector grab all the meshes that you want to use. So I'm going to use all these and just drag it in as you can see the plus sign. And now we have all the mesh. So now if I push play, now if I push space, you can see it scrolls through it, all of them, and we get no error. And if I push the mesh one, same thing, the button, same thing happens. So yeah, it all depends what you guys want to do when changing the mesh, but this is pretty much it. All you would have to do is pretty much call a mesh filter. So have a reference to the mesh filter, have a reference to the mesh. So I'll have them pretty much stored in a variable. And then what you would do is just call the mesh filter or, you know, whatever variable you named it. You could even name this, you know, pretty much anything you guys want. Just model to change. And then as you can see, it all works. And then you just call dot mesh. So pretty much you're getting the mesh of this filter. And then you just set it equal to whatever mesh you want. And it all, it doesn't have to be an array as you guys seen earlier. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped. I will also leave this script right here as is on my website so if you do want to have it like the original just check out this video but it is pretty much easy you just have to delete this you know delete this pretty much and just delete all these and then right here instead of having this if statement you wouldn't even need it because it would only go through one model so you wouldn't even need this if statement but yeah if this helped if you like this video I uh, appreciate it if you guys give that thumbs up. Also, hit that subscribe button if you guys haven't already. It would really help this channel. And also, if you guys want to keep seeing more videos like this. And once again, thank you guys.